Many who have been following my series I'm doing on HF digital modes have been asking me the question, hey MJ, can I do that on my HT here for the UHF VHF bands, such as WinLink and be able to pick up my emails, FL Digi, JSA Call? And the answer is yes. So in today's video, I'm gonna break it down as to what settings you need to do on your HT, what settings you need to do in the software, and what settings you need to do in Microsoft sound system. So if this sounds of interest to you, let's get started. Hey, this is MJ, call sign KW3KW, and welcome to another episode of Ham Radio Made Simple. I'm continuing the series on ham radio for prepping. This is episode number 13. Now, I've been doing a digital HF modes, but today I'm going to deviate. I'm going to show you how you can use those same modes, such as a JSA Call, a FL Digi, WinLink, but you can do it on two meters on the UHF VHF band. So I'm going to walk you through the setup and how to do this. So if you're getting any kind of value from these videos, please hit the like and the subscribe button. It's to help those who are trying to find this channel and don't know how to find it. This improves the algorithms and they, hopefully they can stumble across it a little sooner. And again, thank you for all the positive comments that are out there. So today I'm gonna to go over who uses it, what apps work on the two meter side of it or the 440. I'm gonna get into the setup. I'm gonna show you a best practice demo. I'll specifically take you into the AnyTone settings on the AT578 and the AT878, however, the principle is pretty much the same whether you're using a Yesu, uh, you're using an ICOM or whatever. They're pretty much the same type of uh, settings as well as um, principles that you need to do in order to set it up. And then I'll summarize and wrap this all up. So who's using these digital apps on two meters? Well, it's mostly your MCOM groups. And if there's a local situation, the local MCOM group, such as Aries and Racy's, will often use this. And one of the things they really like, for example, when they're using some of the FL Digi apps, they can use the FL message and be able to attach forms such as your standard situation report known as the ICS-213. Uh, instead of just getting information that comes and goes, they can actually uh, send a form, save the copy, download it, and use it as data points in trying to determine what's the best next steps going forward. Also, it's... Uh, less public monitoring. So if there's a situation going on, just like with police bands and people want to get on and listen to what's going on, as soon as you switch over to digital, it's pretty much the majority of the public is not going to find it. And so it's, it's less visible, more secure, and it's a great way to send, again, local messages. So which digital apps are out there that work pretty well on uh, two meters, for example? Well, FL Digi offers a, a host of applications and it's being used by different MCOM groups. And again, different protocols based on their experience and what works best. It could be the 8 uh, BSK 500 speed, could be the MFSK 11 or the 64 speed. It could be your MT63 uh, 1000L, as well as to use the FL message app to be able to, to attach and use the forms. And if it was me, uh, if I had a local group here and I was trying to do it, I'd probably use FSQ. Again, I'm a big proponent of it. Uh, WinLink, absolutely. They use WinLink FM. They either use Packet WinLink or Vara FM. Ver works really, really well. This, this is really catching on for a lot of people being able to send attachments. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, JSA Call, not so much, but it's a lot of fun if you want to try it. JSA Call uh, is nice to use, but you're going to lose its major advantage on the HF side, which is its ability to capture weak signals in bad conditions. It, so it loses its weak frequency capabilities when you're trying to do like two meters, for example. But if you have a couple guys just having fun, that's a great one to try. Uh, directed calls mostly. So don't think of this as random CQ contacts. I want to go out in two meter digital. Again, exceptions to the rules. You may live in a country or an area. Uh, a city that does this, but for the majority of us, you're not going to be seeing much CQ going on in that. So if you think about it, you got your HT or your mobile unit, and you're out there trying to make it, uh, contacts don't expect much. Um, again, it depends on if this catches on and more people to start to jump on the bandwagon, that could change. But again, mostly used for directed calls. So when we're looking at the UHF, VHF side, remember, line of sight of distance. As the curvature of the earth goes, 
it gets cut off. As the building's in front of you, it gets cut off. In my particular case in Raleigh here, you know, with a lot of rolling hills and I'm in a gully where I live, not not too well for me on my HT side. But if I use my mobile unit with a taller antenna, uh, I can actually go further on it. But again, you know, use two meter. It's preferred as far as distance that's out there. Now, when the NCOM groups are working to overcome a lot of this, they'll basically take over a repeater and uh, use that repeater, which the, the, the groups allow them to do this, by the way. They're not, you know, hijacking it. They take it over. They get first priority and allows them to be able to send a much greater distance. So, uh, again, repeaters the preferred use for the MCOM groups. The first part of the setup of the system requirements will focus on the sound card. I'm going to make the assumption we're not using an all-band radio that goes from, you know, the uh, 70 centimeter all the way up to 160 meters, such as the uh, ICOM 705 or the ASU FT-991A. We're all going to be basically focusing on uh, our mobile and HT UHF VHF radios. So you're going to need an external sound card if you don't have one. Top two choices are DigiRig, which I use and absolutely love, or SignalLink, which is a great choice because it gives you some advantages and with the ability to be able to adjust the volume on the transmission and the receiving side right on the unit right in here. And I've tried it. And a shout out to uh, Kirk KD9 SUV, who uh, I sent him my backup DigiRig, and he sent me his backup SignalLink. We're able to try it and uh, actually really, really like the SignalLink too. So can't go wrong with either ones. Your choice, what you think works best. Remember to get the correct cables. Uh, and again, this just starts to add up some money when you start looking at your HT, your mobile rig, your multiple HF rigs. But it works, and uh, it's worth the investment. Now let's get over to the Windows PC side, device manager. If you're used, if you're used to doing uh, the HF setup, this is secondary to you. To those, this is the first time, and you're trying to get into uh, any kind of digital, and you maybe not have your general license yet. Understand device manager plays a key role in here because this is where we're going to set the baud rate and, and the COM ports have to be correct. So if we open up device manager, go under ports, COM ports, and what you're going to see are typically two numbers in here when you're dealing with an external sound card. Um, and even if you're dealing with some HF ones, if you're doing it with the uh, FT991A, uh, it'll actually show two ports. The top port in here, COM port 4, is known as your enhanced. This is the one you use for HF. When you're doing the UHF, VHF, COM port 5, the second one, is the, it's called standard. That's the one you want to use. So as far as setting your baud rate, it's dependent upon the rig type. So if I have a my 55-watt mobile rig, I can go 9600 on it based, based on the manufacturer specs. But if you're doing uh, your HT, for example, let's say if you have a, a Bofang or an ICOM or Yesu HT, you want to set it at 1200. So how do you do that? So... Double click on COM port 5, which is the standard one we want. So I'm going to double click COM port 5. This will pop up. I'm going to go to port settings. Under port settings from the drop down here, for my mobile rig 9600, I'm going to go uh, choose the baud rate 9600. If I was just doing my HT, uh, you know, my uh, Bofang radio, for example, whatever, then I would take that down to 1200. But here's something interesting to know. Since I'm using both my uh, rig and my HT, I set it at 9600, but it, it can go, anytime the baud rate, it can take this speed and lower. So if, if my HT required me to go to 19.2, for example, it, it wouldn't work, but it, it can take anything below uh, 9600. So again, for me to be able to set this, it'll work for both the 1200 and 9600. But if I had to set at 1200, my mobile rig wouldn't work. It can only take the, the higher number down. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Let's talk about the Windows PC. And this is the sound control panel. So we're, we're gonna focus on this section right now, microphone settings. And microphone settings are basically your receiving end of it. So how do I uh, get my reception to be as best, I can, as best it can be? Well, you have to make sure that the AGC must be unchecked. So. I'm going to go into sound system sound and go to the sound control panel under microphones. I'm going to go to custom and I'm going to make sure that the AGC is not checked. So again, this is the Microsoft sound system, uh, sound control panel, microphone specific custom AGC. Hopefully you get that. Now the volume though is the next tab which is here, the levels. 
So again, microphone properties, that's up, now we're at the levels over here. I'm gonna go to levels, I'm gonna go to start low around 25 because I can use the volume HT knob to adjust as needed. So now it allows me to do some more fine tuning by using the knob on the HT to volume knob. Hopefully this makes sense to you. When it comes to the software setup, particularly FL Digi, this one is tricky. And this is what I found works best so you don't pull your hair out if you have hair still. Uh, apologize to those who don't. Um, FL Digi, if you have, if you're using this for HF and you want to use it for VHF, U, UHF, VHF, you want to create two distinct separate folders. So that means you download the application twice, but you store it in two locations. So how do you do this? You're going to go to, to Windows File Explorer. In my case, it's the C drive is my main drive. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it uh, FL Digi VHF. And here's my FL Digi HF. I have two desktop icons, one that says FL Digi HF, one FL Digi VHF. By doing this, I, I keep the integrity of my HF settings and I keep distinctly separate the integrity of my VHF settings. And they're basically a firewall in between and it makes it faster, easier to use. So again, two complete downloads, two separate folders, name it differently and have your icons match it easily so you don't launch the wrong one. When you're doing Windlink, all you have to do is pretty easy. This one is just, you know, choose the correct setting for FM. So before you hit open session up here, you choose. I use packet Windlink. It could be VAR HF Windlink. And that's all I have to do. So this is a no-brainer. This one's really simple. And when we look at uh, JSA Call, they offer you the ability to have different configurations. And what I have for JSA Call, I have my AT578. That's my mobile uh, UHF VHF rig. I have, if I ever do FL rig, I have one for that. I use it for, that's for my uh, FT891. Uh, uh, and this one I use for my ICOM 7300. And if I want to do a win for ICOM. So I just have to click and switch and, and it opens it up. And I have, again, distinct settings and able to pull that up. This is ideal. The, up here, the FL Digi is difficult, but this is how you do it. Two separate files, two separate names, two icons with two different names. Does that make sense? Now, when we look at the radio setup for HT, um, and again, uh, this is uh, uh, not an all-band radio. I just want to make sure on that one. On all of them, you want to make sure you turn your squelch off. And I can't show you for every, you know, Icon Yesu, Configuration, Anytone, Kenwood, who, who built Bofang. They all have a function in there that says turn squelch off. That's what you want. You want to turn your squelch off in here. And so what I did is I actually, I print up a card, and I'll show you more in detail at the end of the video on this stuff. But... It reminds me what I have to do to go back from voice to digital, digital back to voice in here. So uh, I create a cheat sheet that goes in here. And if you want, you can pause the video and take a look at something like this. But I want to turn the squelch off. I want to turn off any audio enhancements. Uh, since there's no direct CAC control, you change the frequency on your HT. So you want to make sure that the frequency is to the right frequency. Uh, and you don't use the frequencies that are showing in the software app. So here's if I was doing JSA call, this is what my uh, my rig is showing, um, 145.070, which happens to be a gateway in my area. Um, if I wanted to use this on JSA call, that same frequency, even though it's showing 144.178 up here, this doesn't mean anything. This doesn't work. There is no CAT control. And the nice thing about FL Digi is I'll show you, you can hide it and get rid of this frequency box so it's not confusing. Your frequency is being driven by your rig or your HT. So you have to have that uh, programmed into the rig. And usually I do by through memory dials, for example. But if you walk away from the slide, understand this. Set the frequency first on your HT before opening the digital app. So I want to pull up the 145.070, then I open up my wind lake. And here where you can see this is I named this. I put this in my memory in here. This is I have two gateways. Wind link two meter uh is the 145.070. So I don't have to go into the radio and look it up every time. It's part of the memory channels. Again, programming the HT. Pro program the analog frequencies in there. So you may have personal frequencies between some buddies in your ham club that you're doing uh, digital with or you want to share with others. That's great. And uh for the Windlink gateways, I program just like I showed you before. The program is in there, so I just go to a zone, to a memory channel, and done. Easy. 
So even though it's, it says select a channel, you know, that's on here, that channel that I, that I use, the 145.070, that ha- this is not going to change my, uh, my HT or, or my, uh, my mobile rig. It's being driven by my, my HT. So I have to match what this is showing here. And if I wanted to go to the 145.020, I have to go to my rig and I change to, to the next memory channel. It'll pull up this one on here. So again, you select a channel, but you first have it already on your radio, not the other way around. So again, when you're doing a lot of this, I prefer the two meter because of the distance. You can do the 440. You know, the 70 centimeter bands, but two meter just seems to be more options and, it's, and it seems to go further. Before I get into the demo, just a couple points I want to go over. There are differences between using FL Digi, let's say, in the HF versus the UHF world. Um, we're used to using the ALC in the HF side, but you don't use it on the ALs, on, excuse me, on the UHF VHF side. Uh, for those who are just getting into ham radio and don't even have their general license and are looking at this and want to do it, perhaps, uh, you know, with your technician license and you don't know much about ALC. In the HF world, the ALC is uh, what you're looking at is when you're transmitting, you want the signal to be in such a way that it is not going too strong and distorting the signal, nor too low and uh, reducing your power output. So in other words, if I'm trying to send that, 30 uh, uh, watts, I'm basically doing it at 20 uh, to 15 watts because my ALC settings are too low, or if it's too high, it's going to become distorted. But in the UHF, VHF world, it really doesn't come into play. But your volume, which is your um, microphone side, we're really looking at making sure we keep it appropriate so that our receiving and decoding is really good. So for when we're looking at our volume control on the on the handheld in the top right, the, the button on my any tone uh, 878. This changes the, the microphone settings. And so if you look at the FL Digi meter that sits at the bottom here, and again, I'll go more into this in the, in, in the demo, but we want to keep this between, they say 40 to 60, but I usually keep it between 50 and 65. But this can be controlled by just the volume knob up here, as well as what I showed you earlier in the Microsoft sound settings. So always start low and adjust upward. Now, the frequency settings in the software that you can see up in the box and you can adjust them don't come into play whatsoever unless you have an all-band uh, mode uh, radio. So think of it as you're basically going to be controlling the frequency from what's on your HT or your mobile rig. And so, uh, if, for example, to get that confusion out of your mind when I do FL Digi, you go up to View, you can go up to Rig Log Controls, and you go down to None, and it removes the frequency box. You don't see it. So remember this, the frequency uh, settings within the software itself doesn't work. Ignore it, hide it, and try it if you can. If there's a view mode, get rid of it. So hopefully now I can give a, a demonstration that's going to pull all of this together and you're ready to get going with uh, digital and the uh, UHF, VHF side. So in the demo section, I'm going to be covering how to set up device manager and Windows sound settings. I'm going to take you through FL Digi and the op mode MFSK 11. I'm also going to show you WinLink Express, packet WinLink in particular, and actually send a message. And this is all brought to you uh, through the courtesy of Kurt KD9SUV of uh, teaching me how to use it and set that up correctly. So again, thank you, Kurt, for taking the time to help me. And finally, I'll do JSA call. So make sure you stay till the end because I've got some good uh, information as well as some offerings that you're going to want to uh, be able to have access to. So let's get started. In this first section of the demo, I'm going to walk you through your correct settings for Device Manager and Microsoft Sound System. So open up Device Manager and go to your COM ports. And you're going to see here with my rig turned on, I am connected and I'm on COM port 5 with my Anytone HT, uh, you know, Handy Talkie uh, 878. So I need to make sure that the, that the baud rate on this particular one is set at 1200. Now, later on, I'm going to show you when I connect my mobile rig, which is 55 watts, uh, the setup is going to be different. It's going to present two ports to me. And again, I'm using the digi rig. So again, this is going to vary depending on whether you're using a digi rig, you're using a signal link, uh, all band radio, it's going to vary. So again, don't wig out if you see one, if you see two, 
it most likely it's presenting the right information. So I'm just going to double click on this, open it up. I'm going to go to port settings right here, this tab. And since I was using that for my HF, now I have to change it down for to be able to use for the VHF side of it. So I'm going to go to 1200, which is the right baud rate for the uh, HTs. And I'm going to hit OK. Pretty much done. That's all you need to do. Next, let's go over to uh, the Microsoft uh, sound settings. And so we got system here. And I'm going to go under sound. And under sound, I'm going to scroll down all the way to it says advanced more sound settings and click the icon here over on the far right of it as soon as i do that it's going to open up the sound control back panel which you can get to differently within windows 10 but this is the ultimate goal you want to get here so when i look at my speakers my speakers are basically my transmission uh, section of the, all of this so i'm going to just double click by the way i'm showing usb plug and play sound device because i'm using the digirig if you had the signal link it may show usb audio codec uh, but you can actually see some sound now and then coming in here. So I'm just going to double click on this and I want to go through uh, across. I'm going to start at enhancements, disable all enhancements, advanced. This is this is a standard that you're always going to see or should see. Make sure these two boxes are checked. Spatial sound should be off. Now I'm going to go to levels. Now you're going to see a microphone in here. You want to make sure that's, that's uh, turned off. So you just make sure that that zero with the cross meaning you know that slash is it's off on my speakers i keep it about 50 percent if you like uh, dbs you can always switch it over to dbs by just simply right mouse clicking on the uh, slider bar so 50 percent so we're all good this is the transmission side the speakers okay let's get to the receiving the microphone side again i'm looking for my usb plug and play sound device ready to go um, I'm going to go right in here and look under, as I double click this, I want to look under listen, make sure that's not checked so I don't want all the sounds being fed through this. I'm going to go to custom, make sure that the AGC, super important, AGC is not checked. Uh, advanced, uh, you're going to again see the 16-bit 48,000 uh, 48, and this is uh, standard uh, default set settings, but make sure these two boxes are checked. And do not check this one. Enable audio enhancements. That one should not be checked because you don't want to enhance audio when you're doing any of this. So now I'm going to go down to my levels, the last thing here, and I start my levels off at 25%. And I think that's a good recommendation. And then I use the HT volume knob to adjust the microphone settings. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. So pretty much it. That's okay. And okay. And you're set up on the first two parts. Next, we're actually going to do an app and show you how to set up one of the software. The first app I want to show you is how to run FL Digi on two meters. So the first thing you have to do is get the frequencies you want pre-programmed into your HT, turn on your HT and have it set to the frequency that you want to use, then you can open up FL Digi. So you'll start to see a pattern. That's, that's exactly what you have to do. You have to deal with the frequencies coming off your HT, it doesn't apply to the software. The frequencies in the software don't matter. It's what's on your HT. So what I'm going to do here is um, show you that I'm actually launching this from a thumb drive. This is my green thumb drive. Uh, this is my work thumb drive, and I don't use and save documents in on my computer. I use it as a backup. I do it this way for two reasons. Uh, if something ever happened to the computer, I immediately have up-to-date files. And, and more importantly, in the ham world, all my apps are on my thumb drive when I launch it. It doesn't matter what computer I'm in. So if I have three computers, I can take it and plug it in. I don't have to try to sync them and keep them working together. Really, really easy to do. It's just have it all be stored on your thumb drive and launch from your thumb drive. So here you see a version of, uh, of FL Digi for VHF. There's another one I have in here that is for HF. But I'll do the VHF because that's what we're doing today. And simply click on Open. I don't like to double click because sometimes it'll open up two programs right in a row. If that happens to you, raise your hand. I see you. So first thing I want to do is get rid of this up in here, which is your frequency and chosen you. Because remember, the only thing that matters is the frequency that I see on my HT right now that's staring me in the face. So I'm going to go under view. I'm going to go under rig controls. I'm going to go under none. Let's get back over to none. And bingo, it's gone. And so now we're ready to go. I don't have to look at that. And I know I can focus on the HT versus uh, what the software is saying because it's, it doesn't work anyhow in the software. 
So let's go make sure we could do our setup right. So again, the rig is on, the frequency to the exact uh, frequency we're going to be used for transmitting is on. We lo launch the software, go under configure, configure dialog. We're going to go under a couple things here. We're going to go under, uh, I always go sound cards first, under devices, make sure to click on port audio, and this is where you choose. Mine is, you know, the plug and play, could be USB audio codec for you. That's good. Then I always go to the modem. And so if we go to rig, excuse me, rig control, in this particular case, you're going to use hardware PTT. And this is basically uh, the, the mode that works best with your HTs. And it's, it's, so you want to make sure you click use RTS, separate serial ports, you put your COM port in, and you must hit initialize. And once that's done, I can hit save, and I'm good to go. I can hit close. I usually go up and hit my tune button just to see. And yep, uh, the red uh, light is on on my uh, AnyTone 878. I turn that off. So I know I can uh, transmit. So let me turn that off, didn't go off. There you go. Uh, next, what I essentially do here is you can, you can go to your op mode and pick what op mode. I'm, I'm M MFSK 11 is what I'm at. And I had to resize my screen here. So here we are at the offset 1500. We're looking at MFSK 11. Say that fast 100 times. Um, and then again, same thing, read screen, typing screen. So we're going to go in here and we're going to put a message in and simply go up to the top right where it says transmit TX with the arrow on the stop line. This is the button you want to use because when you're done with the text, it's going to work. And always make sure that your cursor is at the end of the, end of the sentence. So I'm essentially going to go up here. I'm going to hit the transmit. And you should see down in here uh the uh, waterfall showing the signals going out and it's going through here so pretty easy uh when it comes to fl digi using the uh the two meter band uh option here so if you have any questions put it in the comments below and i'll get back to you on it so next let's move on to another digital app in this next section i'm going to show you how to use winlink express on two meters. So the first thing you have to do is you have to know what the gateways are, which I'll show you here in a second, you know, the listings. You pre-program them into your rig, and then you make sure you're on that particular frequency for that gateway. Then you open up the application. But to change things up a little bit, and to show you here in, in, in all reality, I need to be able to reach the gateway. I switched to my uh, mobile rig, which has 55 watts with the antenna outside versus my HT. So I know I can hit a gateway doing it this way. So since I changed to the uh, mobile rig, uh, what you're seeing right here is now the, the two uh, uh, COM ports are popping up. COM port 4 is your HF. This is your VHF. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and double click this on. I'm going to go under port settings and I make sure I have my correct baud rate, which is 9600 according to the manufacturer specs. However, this is what you're going to find out, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in the PowerPoint side. Because it's only going to go out at 1,200 uh, baud rate, since I'm above it, it'll work. So this is the time, an example of showing you when you have a, if you have a difference in baud rate, as long as it's higher than what's really going out, you're gonna, it's going to work out okay. So I hit okay. The other thing I, I found out was that I was trying to use my speaker level I showed you in the last uh, session at 50%, and I wasn't connecting to the gateway. So what I did was I went into uh, my playback, my speakers, and my levels, and I changed it to 65%. So now I found out I can connect. So if you're having issues connecting, kick up your speaker uh, levels up higher and see if that helps. In my case, it did. 50 would not connect me. 65 does. So I'm okay on that one. And I always leave this open running in the background, so if I have to make changes and found out 65 wasn't enough, I need to go to 70, I don't have to go through all of the screens to set it up. I just let it go in the background there. So next what we're going to do is go to WinLink Express, and uh, we're going to uh, create a message. Typically what you do here is you're going to go uh, to, and since I, to save time, I'm going to actually show you my outbox. I already have one here. And so this is to uh, Brian uh, in Idaho. And so what I do, I created it. I want to make sure I send it as a WinLink message. I post it to my outbox. And now it's in my outbox. So now I'm going to go over to the open session. I want to pick the right one. If you're using VARA, 
FM, this would be here. I'm using Packet Winlink, which is right here. And all I have to do now is hit Open Session. Now, the sound card modem software, uh, the link is in the description below. And if you want, you can take a look at my screens. Um, but I also have the settings if you want them. Uh, again, just there's more information after the demo to find out how you can get all my settings that I'm showing you here today. So next, I'm going to look at uh, the uh, channel selection. Now, this is where I pre-programmed. I did all of this. And I looked and I found out there are two, the 145.070 and 145.020 are the two programs that I have in already in uh, my zone and under uh, WinLink. So this is where you would get it. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on uh, the 145.070. Um, so that's all set and ready to go. I'm going to go over to here to my sound uh, modem settings and I am going to go under Devices, and this is where you put in your, again, DigiRig, PNP, sound, car, uh, sound device. Again, yours could be different, could be codecs, USB codec. Speaker, microphone, and what you need right in here, most importantly, is your uh, COM port. Again, follow what I have in here, and this is all the settings that you need for this side. The second part is we're going to go under Settings and go under Modems. And again, just hit the pause if you want, look at this, or stay till the end of this video, and I'll show you how you can get all of this uh, in a document. So we have all of that. I hit OK. So we have our settings set for the sound modem. We have uh, the uh, right uh, uh, channel selected, and I'm ready to hit Start. Now notice this is 1200 baud, and I'm set up for 96 in Device Manager. It'll work. Watch. I'm going to hit Start. And you can see over here on this side how fast this is working under the sound modem. And we'll see, this, this, takes, this is usually pretty quick here, usually less than a minute. And it's sending right now. Uh, completed message, sent one message. And it, uh, let's see, end of session, it took a total of 22 seconds on this one. Now, again, if the gateway's further away and you have poor reception, et cetera, but that's to show you how fast. Now, if we go now over into our outbox, it's gone. And if, if I had an incoming, any incoming messages, it would have downloaded those at the same time too. And just another side note on this one, when you're using this, you don't have to have something in your outbox to go check messages. You can just go ahead and start a session, open it up and run it. And if there's messages out there, it will populate your inbox. So. Pretty simple on how to use this. Again, look in the link in the description below for information how you can download Sound Modem. So let's move on to the final app. Okay, the last app I'm going to show you is uh, JSA Call. Uh, so again, the calling frequencies that you want to use for any of these uh, uh, digital apps I'm showing you. Again, you have them pre-programmed into your radio and you pull them up before you even turn on the app. The app goes on. You already have the frequency you're gonna transmit on. This doesn't matter. What you see up here is not gonna go out. It's what's on the rig is gonna go out. That's why I like on uh, FL Digi, you could hide that. But what I like about JSA Call though, as far as trying to uh, uh, only have one application but multiple configurations, this is what this offers. So what I essentially did is I took the ICOM 73 and I cloned. And then I took uh, the next, I renamed it, because it's going to show clone over there. I renamed it, and then I switched to it. And then I took my uh, AT578, I chose that one, and I go under Files, Settings. And the only, it's really simple. I, I keep all my other settings, but I'm changing the rig information, the audio. So you do the audio, make sure now that you're using, if you're using the DigiRig, it's the USB plug and play. For your microphone speaker, radio is simple. Under rig options, RTS, your COM port, and the rig up here is none, okay? Three settings, none, RTS, COM port five, and this is working for my Anytone AT578 mobile unit. Um, if you look under cat control, there's nothing there. That's really good. If I hit uh, test, push to talk, turns red, and I can see the transmission light on the AT578 light up, it's perfect. I hit that, it's off, and goes back to green. So perfect, you're done, that's it, simple as that. 
A uh, couple things I want to point out, though. Uh, check your, your, this is your microphone, which is your receiving side of it. 55 is going to work great, but I just want to show you what happens again when I move my volume knob. If I go down, one way goes way down. I can take it up. So I am going to take it just a little bit higher. Right about there. And I'm set. Um, as far as the power side on it, like I did the speakers on the last one, if you're not getting through, you can kick the power up on your transmission through uh, the speaker settings, which I keep that window open so I can do it right there. Remember, I can uh, uh, go under re uh, playback, excuse me, and I just double click and I can change the levels. So another way of doing it. And so again, I leave that alone. Uh, on the side here, you can also do it over here. But let's go ahead and uh, send a message. So you just type it in. The frequency is what's on showing me right now on the on my rig, on my AT578. So I just hit that and I hit enter. Now I'm going at the slow speed up in here. This is where you change the speed. And I'm looking over. So typically when it gets partway through here, it's going to engage uh, the rig and it'll start to transmit. Now it's just starting to transmit. On slow, it's going to go through. You're also going to notice that the bandwidth is more narrow. Uh, so it's going to be a slower speed, but it's going to be stronger as far as getting the signal out. Uh, so we'll just have to wait till this thing kind of goes, uh, plays its course. Uh, again, um, if you look under some of these settings in here, uh, nothing has changed. I left everything that I had before. I just brought it over from uh, from my iCom 7300. And I'm just changing the audio and the, the rig information. And now it's working on two meters. So if you're trying to do CQ that's out there, um, if you try to do on the main calling frequency, I know they have one for the 70 centimeter and that's the 50.318. You may find something on there. Um, I'm not sure if anyone knows what the main calling frequency is for JSA call on two meters. Uh, post it in the comments below. Or if you have any questions, uh, if I'm not covering something that you don't see, go ahead and uh, put it in the comments below. But let's wrap this up and uh, get back and uh, show you how you can get some of the documentation I've been speaking about. Okay, for all of those who stayed to the end, I've got documents I'm willing to, to send to you. Uh, again, for those who made it this far, you should be rewarded. So if you want the settings for the uh, Anytone 578878, and this is what I cut and put right, you know, and cut the paper in half, and I keep near each of the different radios so I know how to rev uh, go from digital to voice and voice back to digital. Really simple. Uh, I have software settings. I got FL Digi here. Uh, you, you can see um, everything you need to know to get it working. Uh, so if you want it, email me at hamradiomadesimple at gmail.com. Specify which document. For example, I want the FL Digi UHF VHF document. If you don't get specific on it and you don't get a response, it's because you weren't specific. You know, please understand, I don't have time to play email with everybody coming in here who's not being clear as to what document they want. So I know many of you guys in the ham radio are great at doing this. I know you're going to tell me exactly which document, whether it's the HF or the UHF VHF, be very specific. And the only cost to you is to hit the like and the subscribe button. And again, thank you for the kind comments in there. What are the other documents? I have JSA call against, and this is specific to the UHF, VHF side. I have also the uh, WinLink uh, a packet document. Same thing for you. All you have to do again, email me and specify which document, very specific. And in summary in here, remember, when we're using analog UHF, VHF, digital, it's not like HF. You got to turn off your squelch and uh, all your sound enhancements. Um, it's, again, this is not an all-band mode. I'm talking about HTs and mobile rigs. Don't use the frequency box in the digital software. They don't apply. The only thing that applies is the frequency, the changes that are happening right on your HT or on your rig. Um, also, there's no ALC adjustments, so get that out of your mind. But know how to work your sound systems regardless. I did a video on this, so if you're new and you're trying to figure out what's this guy crazy guy talking about, uh, my last video was on digital audio settings. The link is in the description below. Go ahead and watch that. It'll clarify a lot of stuff and make it different because, uh, again, HF, excuse me, when you're doing digital uh, versus voice, it's the opposite. Uh, you, know, you know, microphone is, is one. Uh, microphone is to receive in the digital world. Uh, microphone is to broadcast in 
the voice world. And it's the same thing on, on the uh, transmission. It's just the opposite. So my next video is coming up as JSA call from a prepper standpoint. And uh, what I'm talking about here is um, knowing when stuff hits the fan, you think field day is bad. It's going to be field day on steroids, everyone flooding the bands. Are there things that you can do, filters you can put in place, uh, tips and tricks that you can do to make it work better from a prepper standpoint? And the answer is yes, there is. Then I'm going to talk about my Palomar off-center fed dipole, game changer for me. I still love my uh, MCOM 2. Uh, I use a sloper up 50 feet. It works great, but I don't get the West Coast easy. It, and so I want, I use my Palomar off-center fed to do more longer distance. Fantastic antenna. Complements what I already have. Uh, FL Digi update. I'll do tips and tricks, and I'll do best modes. Uh, trying to go over. It won't be as complete as the other one was. It's going to be really concise to point out uh, things to make you who are trying to do FL Digi better. So if you like this video, please, again, hit the like and subscribe button. And again, this is MJ, KW3KW, with Ham Radio Made Simple, out.